a lot of moms are feeling and dads, um, and you don't have to be a parent to feel this frustration, you know, just a frustration with my life is not how I thought it would be. I'm not as far along as I thought it would be. How would you like define frustration and how does someone know when they're kind of like, yeah, this is maybe beyond normal frustration? Yeah, I think I've realized that the frustration happens when we see that a change needs to take place, and yet we don't know how to get ourselves to that change. And that is where I saw the Lord encounter me in this season with this wrestling with him, because I wanted the change, but I didn't have the ability to change myself. So I started to resent a lot of things. Because I thought I knew all the answers from the Bible. I had grown up in a Christian home. I had gone to a Christian school. I'd been very involved in missions and ministry and all of the things. And all of the good answers that I knew didn't seem to be working. And that frustrated me so much. Because it was like this formula that I thought had been my go-to way of being was now lost. And I was confused. And I felt let down by God because the ways that it had all worked before were no longer working. And that was my frustration piece. I think that's such a good thing to recognize is we become tired of trying when what has worked previously is no longer working, you know? (laughs) So when you finally get kind of to this stage of like, okay, what was working is not working anymore. What is that mm-hmm. next step to, okay, I am ready to try something new, or maybe it's more of a posture of rest because you are tired of trying, right? So kind of get us, we've come mm-hmm. to that realization. What what happened next for you? Honestly, I'll tell you that for me, the Lord is definitely going to strong arm me in in a bear hold, you know, because I was like, I will perform. I will try harder. I will serve. I will make sure that the leadership knows about me, that I can do all of these things. And, um, you you know, the list that we carry around. (laughs) Um, And the Lord just was like, I'm not going to let any of that work. And so my frustration continued to build because I continued to try and make it happen in my own strength. And what I realized was that the Lord needed me to be tired of trying because I wanted it to be myself. I wanted it to be my own savior. And so he's like, what you don't need is strength. What you need is surrender. And I really don't think I understood what surrender really looked like because I believed in my core and my heart of hearts that God only loved me to the degree in which I could serve him. He didn't love me when I was had nothing to give. And so if I had nothing to give, then I was worthless. And so that was why I continued to try. And so he took me through this journey <laughs> of holding me down and saying, I love you even when you can do nothing for me. And that was actually so hard to believe. And he continued to hold me down until I could start to just try and believe that. It's like your heart waking up to this new truth that you've never really allowed yourself to think before. Yeah. I think about that title. When you hear the title, Tired of Trying. (laughs) So, you know, I don't think what you're saying is just give up. Like, it's not worth it. (laughs) Just give up on motherhood. Give up on God. Give up on the promises. Just give up. That's not what you're saying. It sounds to me like what you're saying is stop trying to do it on your own merit, on your own strength, on your own willpower, and, you know, trust God that he loves you just how you are. How did you get to that point of really believing and understanding and really sitting in, God loves me. I I could do nothing. And and God still loves me. Take us to your knee injury, because I feel like I love what you said in the book about how when physically you were wounded and had to heal. It forced you also to do some internal healing. How did that time of being kind of incapacitated have helped that strong arming of God that you were talking about? Yeah, I think in that story, I'll say it really quickly. I was 
doing, I thought I was doing something great. It was New Year's Day. I was going to work out and start a new, new chapter regimen. <laughs> exactly. As we do. And I went to, and I had on my grossest pajamas, of course. I, I don't know <laughs> what I was thinking. I should have been fully dressed with shoes on. Everyone work out with shoes on. This is my, <laughs> this is my totally. announcement to you. <laughs> but I, my son was a baby at the time and I had a baby blanket on the floor and I went into uh, to do a lunge and I slipped and my kneecap went to the side of my leg and it was stuck there and I fell to the ground screaming and I choose a word for the year to focus on and what is the Lord going to teach me about this word felt like he had given me the word listen (laughs) So this happened. I went to the hospital. It was a whole ordeal. If you want all the details, you can read it in the book. But fast forward to the next day, this happened again. And my knee went off again. And I'm thinking, Lord, it's not like I need a miracle. We cannot afford this. I don't want to be carried down the stairs again. I don't want to go to the hospital. You can do miracles why won't you do a miracle for me? And I was rolled out by the paramedics and my dad sat in the living room and he had been a firefighter for 30 years. And I thought to myself, if he and his physical power could do something for me, he would. Why won't my heavenly father do this? And as I sat in the back of the ambulance again, I said, okay, I'm listening. And I felt that in my spirit, the Lord kind of say to me, you're going to go through this either way. You can go with it through with me or without me. And I think once we've experienced the Lord and his goodness and the beauty of his rescue over and over and over in our lives, when we're faced with these trials, we would rather, much rather go through it with him than without him. And so I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold on to you with everything that I have. I don't understand this season. I don't know why you say no to every single prayer that I pray. I don't know why everything in our life is hard, but I do know that I love you and I believe, and I'm going to stand on that you love me too. And how some, in some way you will work this for my good. And I wrote on my chalkboard in my living room, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living and decided, you know, I'm, this is faith. This is what faith looks like in our day in and our day out where we stand on what is true and say, it doesn't look like that in my reality yet, but this is what God says. And I'm going to hold on to him until he blesses. And this is Jacob, right? Wrestling, like, I will not let you go until you bless me. 